<laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah, it's, okay. it's not working. It's not working. What can I tell you? I we'll wait until you guys go on. I apologize. Okay. Okay. It's one nine four. lessons pertaining to my life, of course, and to Burgundy, who will be singing life lessons. But first, you get me. My name is Tina Panariello, and just to let you know, guys, I'm 100 years old. <laughs> so just bear with me. Be excused if I get a little wobbly or something or I lose my brain. Okay, so, well, just want to let you know how old I am. Even though women aren't supposed to tell their age, but I figured that was a good idea, don't you think? Yeah? Yeah. yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to let you know how my life has been changed through life's lessons. And you could have anything you want if you believe in what you want. If you don't believe in it wholeheartedly, heart, mind, soul, you're not going to receive what it is you want. And what I'm talking about is confidence building. I came over here, actually not here, but in Brooklyn, from Manhattan, at the age of 11. And when I got into high school, they offered a program called co-op. Does anybody here ever know, know what that is, a co-op course? Ah, three people. Anybody over here know what that is? Very good. Well, I wanted money. You all want money, correct? And I got tired of asking my parents to give me money. And I got tired of asking my parents, can I go buy clothes? Can I get a dress? Can I go buy shoes? And it turns out that I found a way to do it. So I had the opportunity to learn and make money at the same time. The difference is this. You know how all of you go for a job today and you basically just wear a suit, either a pantsuit or a dress suit, Right? That's it you wear, right? A shirt, a nice blouse. Well, back then, I told you I was 100, back then, you had to wear your high heels, your stockings, your dress, no such thing as a business suit, your gloves, and your hat. Now, hat. What do I know about a hat at 16? 
I bought a hat and it had a little pullover veil like and I felt like, oh, who am I? And the school sent me to the New York Telephone Company. How do you like that? So I go walking in, we talk, we discuss everything, and I got the job. So now, little old Tina felt very independent. And I felt great. It was really great. So that built my confidence saying, all right, I can get a job. And I can get an education at the same time. My parents would not let me work after school. So this worked out great. Now, the next thing is, I didn't want to lose my own individuality. So how the heck do you do that? Well, you have to do that by learning purpose and passion. And what I found out I wanted to do when I started working was, I wanted to go to acting school. A friend of mine said to me, come on, Tina, audition with me. I looked at him. At that time, I worked in a bank. At that time, I looked at him. I said, you're crazy. How could you ask me to go to an acting school? Mind you, it was the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Manhattan. That's where I went to audition. But before I went, I was married. So I went to college after I was married, not before I was married. And I threw my husband on the table, never mind table, on the bed. I sat on top of him with my clothes on, everybody. Don't get panicky. And I looked him in the eye and I said, Al, I want to go to acting school. What do you think? And he looked up at me and he goes, Tina, you work, right? I go, yeah. He goes, well, you have the money for it, right? Yeah. Then go. I was kissing him and hugging him. Ladies, you know what I was doing. Come on now, come on. You have to be thankful for your husband to say you can go to college. You're already married. So that's what I did. And while I was there and I graduated, I was taking singing lessons. Because when you act, you have to be able to sing, you have to be able to dance, you never say you can't do anything. So I decided to talk to my two singing teachers and say, I want to put a theater group together. What do you think? A children's theater group. Now, you're all sitting here going, boy, she went from that to that. Well, I want a lot of things. And I made it my point to go find out how to get it. So, put my brain to it. I was part of AFTRA. And I saw a lot of actors and actresses at all the restaurants. Everything you hear about what actors do, they do. They have no money. They have no food. So, AFTRA puts parties together at restaurants, and that's where they get their food to take home. So I got to know a lot of the actors and actresses. So I went over to Patrick, and I said, Patrick, let's put a theater group together. Well, how are we going to do this? I said, listen, leave it to me. I'll go to one of the dinners, and I'll tell everybody I'm putting a children's theater group together. We'll do Rapunzel and the Witch, and I'm sure every one of them went on to do it. He said, well, what about if they have to be equity? I said, we can't afford equity. That's it, no equity. They just have to be willing to do this. So, Patrick is the one who auditioned everybody. I put the theater group together. I paid the console guys. I had long blonde wig. I made the whole screen, the scenery that went on stage. And that's where the carousel players came in. Now, it worked. But unfortunately, actors are very difficult to get along with. They nitpick, as you all must know, right? We all nitpick at each other. Well, that's what they were doing. And I had already was assigned to a school, another school. And once that happened, I said, all right, this is it. I was the owner of it, the producer, not the director, just the producer. I was the money person. So what I did, I went to Patrick or... I'm trying to think, did it go to Patrick? I don't think I did. I called the school immediately, three months or four months before we had to go on, and I said, I'm calling you to let you know that I'm dismantling the carousel players. And she goes, Tina, why? What's wrong? I said, I'm having problems with my actors. They're not getting along. I cannot have that. It is wrong. And then somebody wants to go away to Florida, and somebody was going to another island, I said, so, I am giving you three months' notice. Have you done so much? Have you put anything out there? All we did was do posters. I said, okay. She goes, I have to tell you something. I said, what? 
nobody, but nobody, who has done anything in our school has given us this advance notice. They just don't show up. I said, are you kidding me? She goes, no, I'm very serious. She said, you are very professional. I said, well, being in business for as long as I have, this is what you must do. So she said, if you ever put the carousel players back together, please give me a call. And I said, okay, that sounds great. So I dismantled it. And then I was working at another place called F.S. Smithers, a brokerage house. Now you're wondering, I'm going from place to place. But isn't that how you make extra money? Yes, no, maybe. What do you say? Feedback. Is that how you make extra money? You have to find a different job so you get a little more salary in there? Well, while I was taking my singing lesson, somebody said, oh, they're doing cabaret. Where are they doing cabaret? I still had this acting bug in me. Well, turns out they were doing cabaret right here in Staten Island at the Staten Island College. And I wanted to go and audition. The girl that told me about it did not want me to go and audition. So now, again, actors, bumping horns, okay? So what I did was I made a phone call, found out more about it. I go down there, I call Patrick, I tell him what I'm doing. In the meantime, my singing lesson was, guess what guys, the song Cabaret. <laughs> And I had a belter's voice. I have a mezzo-soprano. So I could sing a very low key, and I can also sing a very high key. How do you like that, Denise and Stephen? I could sing. Well, it turns out, I go, and the director looks at me and says, Tina, could you sing the song Cabaret? I said, could I sing the song Cabaret? Of course I could sing the song Cabaret. He goes, OK, I want you to sing it. So I sing it, they play the music, I sing the song. Now I went there, guys and girls, to play Fräulein Schneider with a Russian accent, you know? I didn't go for the lead. That was not my thing. So he looks at me, he goes, do you think you could play Sally Bowles? And I go, quickly, the brain going like this. They tell you in acting school, you don't say you can't do something. You always say you can do something. If you can't do it, you gotta learn it. Never say, no. so in a split second, I can't snap my fingers, my nails are too long. In a split second, I said, yes, I could do Sally Bowles. The part's yours. Cry, be emotional, oh my God, and you're gonna laugh. I didn't call my husband, I called Patrick. <laughs> I called him and his answer was, now, like, I believe in what I could do, and I feel what I believe in. He gets on the phone and he goes to me, okay, tell me you got the lead. I go, what? Tell me you got the lead. I said, how do you know? You're in New York and I'm here. He said, how do I know? Because I know. I said, well, yes, I got the lead. He goes, great, we have to celebrate now. Don't worry about it. When you come next time, we're going to have a party. I said, okay. And now I call my husband. I tell my husband. And now what am I doing? I'm studying to have the lead in cabaret. And when I'm doing it, as I'm doing the last song, the cat song cabaret, the last day of the show, I get this woolly and I go, I think I'm doing this the rest of my life. I wanted to be an actress. And I said, now is the time to make a decision. And that's what I did for seven years. I acted off Broadway. I auditioned on Broadway. I sang at clubs. And that's how I went. Thank you. And that's how I built my confidence and kept going. But it didn't stop there. Nothing stops there. You can never actually give up. And the way you hear me telling my story, I have a lot of passion and purpose. Because without that, you're going to get nothing. Am I right, guys? Yes. If you don't have passion deep down inside, yes. or a purpose for what you want to do, yes. well, you don't know this, but I'm a nail doctor, and I left a little something out at the beginning. 
and I have to tell it to you because it's very important. When I graduated high school, I wanted to go to Brooklyn College, and I went, and I flunked. And for a summer before that, I drew the inside of the anatomy of the human body. I could draw your heart, your lungs, your eyes, not on the outside, the inside. All those little veins, which is what I was doing. Not knowing I have that talent from my father's family. So I have an art background without even knowing I have an art background. So I just wanted to let you know that. So I could not pass the test to get into Brooklyn College. That is why I worked in an office as a secretary or an assistant. So I had to let you know that because I wanted not only to be a doctor, I wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted to go in the operating room and literally operate on the heart and the lung and everything else. But I couldn't do it. So instead, now, I'm called a nail doctor. And I have to know everything about nails to do what it is I'm doing. So that, that's passion and purpose as well. So how I discovered my passion for nail art was exactly what I just told you. I was always an entrepreneur at heart, no matter what I did, as I told you when I started with the theater group. After acting, I gave it up after I had my son. I had to do something, guys. So what I did was, I had an in-home jewelry business. Again, a reason for doing something, a reason for putting food on the table, a reason to feel good about yourself, for me to feel good about myself. And it's fashion jewelry, but it's good jewelry. And how I did it, I entered the company, and how I wound up getting my in-home parties, my nails, I don't think you could see them, but my nails are all hand-painted. Can anybody see them from up there? I have this light on me. Yes, yes. no, maybe? Maybe. Okay, maybe. I used to do my nails at the same time I was selling jewelry. So I would go into a restaurant. <laughs> I would go into a restaurant and I would go say to Katie and I would show her my jewelry. And I would go, excuse me, Katie, do you see this beautiful jewelry? And she'd go, yes. Right, Katie? Yes. Okay. And I would go, Katie, do you want to have a, be a jewelry party for me, please, if you receive 70%? Say no. No? I would say yes to 70%. No, but you have to say no first. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that's not enough. That's well, no. I want you to look at my nails. And if I gave this to you as a gift to give me a jewelry party besides the percentage, would you do it then? All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, guys, I made top seller in that business because of these little things on my fingers and selling my jewelry. And that's how nails and jewelry got together between passion and purpose. Once you find your passion, you discover your own individuality. So, am I doing good over here late right next? Is yes. this working out fine? Yes. Well, if I continue this, I think we're gonna wind up with the whole speaking thing and I don't think we should go any further. I think it's time Right, Miss Danielle, my lovely person? Oh, that's all right. I think it's time that we bring up, because then I'll finish it later. I'll do the rest of this after, and then we'll get to the nitty-gritty of everything, and we'll find out exactly what's going on. I would like to bring up Burgundy, Denise, and Steve. Let's give them a round of applause. Hi everyone, uh, I am Denise and this is Steve and a little over 20 years ago we created Burgundy. Um, it started out as a duo just like you see us right here right now and kind of like what Tina spoke about, uh, things seem to manifest 
and we had always wanted a band, and little by little we just encountered people along the way, and we were able to build a band. We went from being a two-person duo to at one point we had what eleven people in the band at one point. Well, we had a, we had like four or five horns at one time. Yeah. We yeah we had a whole band with horn section and everything, so. It was pretty incredible, and it was all based of uh, original music, which was even more incredible because it's so hard to get your original tunes out and about and actually have people learn the material enough that they wanted to play with us, knowing there's no money in it at that time. Um, and we had a good run. We did it for how many years? I don't even know. I would say from inception to end, at least 10, which I think is pretty, pretty good for an original act. Um, and well, roughly, today, like yeah. <laughs> um, roughly 20 years ago was when I met Tina, and we hit it off, and we became great friends. She, well, I don't have nails anymore, but she used to do my nails, and through that interaction, we became good friends, and we realized how much we had in common. And she used to come see us perform in Manhattan when we were just this duo, before we had a band, before we made our albums, before we did anything. And she was one of our tried and true supporters from the get-go. So it just came all full circle. Um, we are reunited tonight. This is the first time that Steve and I are playing in many, many years. We haven't done our originals in probably 13 years. So this is special that you guys are here. And, <laughs> and hopefully we remember our own songs. <laughs> um, the songs that we're doing are a combination of everything off of these two albums here. Um, the first song that I ever wrote, I think I was 15. We started playing together when I was 16, 17 years old. I will tell you I'm 41 in a couple of weeks. So it's been a long journey for us. Um, and the songs speak of my personal life. We wrote the songs together, but the lyrics are of my life. So it is very personal. Uh, it's basically like sitting naked on a stage every time I sing with people. Um, it is like singing my diary for you. So, the beginning songs are more about how things started out. Cheers! <laughs> um, and then you'll see when we come back on later, it, it takes you through the evolution of just my own thoughts throughout life and, and where I end up. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna start off.
the songs I played flute on, <laughs> which I also haven't played in about 20 years. Um, I wrote on a train. I used to live in Brooklyn. And I actually wrote this song. I was so disgusted with my commute every day, and I was so disgusted with just life in general and not understanding why we run such a rat race. And this is what I came up with. Oh, 
Help! 